Welcome my children. Now in the previous video we have been discussing about the cell organelles. So the first one is cell membrane, second one is cell wall, third one is nucleus, fourth one is cytoplasm, fifth one is mitochondria, sixth one is plastic, seventh one is ribosome, eighth one is endoplasmic reticulum, and ninth one is Golgi apparatus, tenth one is lysosomes, and the eleventh one is vacuum. So these are all the cell organelles present in each and every cell except prokaryotic cell. So in the previous video we have discussed about the differences between eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell. Okay and now let us start discussing about mitochondria. In this video we are going to discuss about a special cell organ present in each and every cell. Almost all the cells will possess mitochondria. Why it is called as power force of the cell? What is the role of mitochondria? What will happen if mitochondria is not there in our cell? Everything will be discussed in this topic for you. So, meet you back children. Now listen here properly. Now mitochondria. What is mitochondria? So the special cell organelle present in the cell. Present in the cell. So when you observe mitochondria in a normal compound microscope, it will be observed as just a green color. Over cylindrical grains will be scattered in the cytoplasm. Did you get my point, ma? Some green color, oval or cylindrical grains will be scattered in the cytoplasm. That green color cylindrical grains are called as mitochondria. What is that called ma? Mitochondria. So before we go to the features of mitochondria, how to observe mitochondria? How to know whether the cell is having mitochondria or not? What is the internal structure of mitochondria? That is the thing we are going to deal now. So for that we are going to do an activity. So each and every lab activity will have five main headings as I mentioned you before. First one is A. Second one is apparatus. Third one is procedure. Fourth one is observation. And fifth one is inference. So this inference can be termed as result and also can be termed as conclusion. So this is up to you now. So once again I will tell you ma, what is the first one? A. Second one is apparatus. Third one is procedure. Fourth one is observation. And fifth one is inference. Now let us start. What is our aim? What is our aim? To observe mitochondria. Before knowing its peculiar characters, before, before knowing the unique feature present in mitochondria, we have to ensure that uh, this is present in, my, in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm. Now let us start. Aim. Aim is to observe mitochondria. Our aim is to observe what? Mitochondria. Okay. And now the next step. What are the apparatus we are going to use for this experiment or for this activity? What are all the apparatus we are going to use is onion peel. We are going to use the experimental material called onion peel. So different materials can be used to observe different things. Now when you take the, the experiment called oak tree experiment which was done by whom? Robert Cook. He observed the oak tree and he came to a conclusion that each and every organism is made up of cell. So cell was discovered by whom? Robert who? By which experimental material? Oak tree. When you take Robert Brown, he is the person who discovered nucleus. In the previous video we have seen. Through which name? Orchid leaf. So the experimental material selected by Robert Brown is orchid leaf. Now for us to observe mitochondria, we are taking an experimental material called onion peel. Onion peel. So there is a peculiar way to observe nucleus and there is a peculiar way to observe mitochondria. Now let us start. So the experimental material selected by us is onion peel. For that we need Janus green bee. It's a powder, Janus green bee. We need a beaker. We need a beaker. We need watch glass. Watch glass. We need cover slip. We need a slide. And observe it under microscope. We need a microscope. Under high magnification, we are going to observe this. Okay? So once again, ma, first of all, we need what? Onion peel. Second, we need Janus green bees. Second, third one, beaker. Fourth one, watch glass. Next one is cover slip. Next one is what? Cover slip. Cover slip. Okay. Next one is slide. And the next one is microscope. Microscope. Okay. And now let us start the procedure. First of all, in order to examine the cell, we have to just take the experimental material called 
on a field. For that, what we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to take a beaker. We are going to take a beaker. What we are going to take, ma? Beaker. In that beaker, we are going to make or prepare a fresh solution of Johannes Green Bean. How to prepare the solution? How to prepare solution? First of all, we have to take 200 mg of Janus Green Bean. We have to take 200 mg of Janus Green Bean. In how many ml of water? 100 ml of water. Stir it well. It will prepare what? Solution. You got my point, ma? So take 100 ml of water. In that, we have to mix 200 mg of Janus Green Bean. Stir it well. It will become a solution. Now, Janus Green Bean solution is ready with you. Now what we have to do is, we have to take that in a watch glass. Watch glass is nothing but, it's just look like a transparent saucer. Okay, in that watch glass, take little amount of that uh, Janus Green Bee solution. Janus Green Bee solution. In that solution, we are going to keep this onion peel. We are going to keep this onion peel. First of all, take that, take that watch glass. In that you pour this solution, not all the 100 ml, little amount of solution you are going to pour in this, pour in this, what is this, watch glass. Okay, so now you take onion peel what you have selected and keep it in this solution for about half an hour. That means in 8 and a half you have done an experiment on matchstick. On matchstick, to observe dead cells, what did you do? You have soaked, you have soaked what? Match stick in water for half an hour. Now we are not going to observe the cell. We are going to observe the mitochondria present in the cell. So we are not using water alone, but we are using a solution prepared by Janus Green. Okay, ma? So now we got the difference now. So in this watch glass, what you are going to do? You are going to pour this solution. And now we are going to keep this onion peel what we have selected in this for how many hours? Only for half an hour. Later on, take a slide. Take a slide. Take a little amount, a tiny piece from the soaked onion peel. From the soaked onion peel. Now just take a small part from that. Keep it on the slide. Wash it thoroughly with the water. After washing it thoroughly, cover it with a cover slip. Cover it with cover slip. And now you have to observe it under microscope. You have to under observe it under microscope. When you observe it under microscope, when you observe it under microscope, you will find a green colored over plants where scattered in the cytoplasm of the cell. That structures are nothing but mitochondria. That spots are what? Mitochondria. So this is to show how to observe mitochondria. All of you got my point, ma? So the solution what we are using here is Janus Green Bean. The experimental material selected by us is onion peel. Okay? In the beaker, we are going to prepare this solution. In the watch glass, we are going to pour this solution. And in the watch glass, we are going to soak the onion peel for half an hour. Later on, little amount of that, little piece from that will be selected, washed thoroughly and we will observe it under microscope to observe mitochondria. This is the way how to observe mitochondria. So if you observe it under compound microscope, some grains will be scattered here and there in the cytoplasm like this. These are called mitochondria. But if you observe the same structure under electron microscope, so there are three types of microscopes. One is simple microscope, second one is compound microscope and the third one is electron microscope. So, this compound microscope is more worthier than simple microscope. When you take electron microscope, this will magnify, this will magnify any object, any substance or any substance whatever you take for about 10,000 times. When you take compound microscope, it will magnify for 300 times. Whereas when you take electron microscope, it has the power of magnifying an organism, magnifying a substance or magnifying any other organel for how many times? 10,000 times. Now, when you observe it under electron microscope, you can observe a structure like this. This is the 
exact structure of mitochondria. This is the exact structure of what mark? Mitochondria. So this is the structure of mitochondria. Okay ma? So this is called the powerhouse of the cell present in almost all the eukaryotic cells. In the previous video we have discussed about the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So this is the structure of mitochondria. Okay? And for your convenience I will say you that there are two membranes. This will be considered as one membrane. This will be considered as another membrane. This is outer membrane and this is inner membrane. See here ma? This green color structure is called as outer membrane. And this inner structure, inner wall structure. Okay? This is having an yellow shape. This is called as what? This is called as inner membrane. So, outer membrane is soft. Whereas inner membrane is not as soft as outer membrane. It is thrown into folds. It is thrown into folds. I hope all of you are observing very clearly. Okay? So, this is soft. This is outer membrane. And this is inner membrane. Which is thrown into folds. These folds are called as cristae. These folds are called as what ma? Cristae. So, I am drawing only the folds just with C here ma. So, the folds will be like this. This is the inner membrane. In this folds, some fluid will be flowing. This fluid is called as matrix. This fluid is called as what? Matrix. The fluid flowing between these two membranes called cristae is called as what? Matrix. And in that matrix, small dots will be present. Of course, in your higher classes, not now. Okay. These are called elementary particles. So, this is a clear structure, unique structure. You can observe it under electron microscope. So, once again, only four points now. This is outer membrane. This is inner membrane. Outer membrane is soft. Inner membrane is not soft. It is thrown into folds. This is double membrane. And this inner folds are called as cristae. They are arranged in zigzag fashion. Okay? And in the midst of this cristae, a fluid will be flowing. And that fluid is called as matrix. And in that fluid, small particles, small granules will be present. That are called as what? Elementary particles. This is the internal structure of mitochondria. And this is called powerhouse of the cell. Why it is called powerhouse of the cell? Now I will explain. Before that, please be sure that, that you are perfect in this structure of mitochondria. In the examination point of view, this is a very, 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 very important concept. Even for the diagrammatical part that is AS5. Okay, so they will ask you to draw the diagram of powerhouse of the cell. If you draw a bamboo power plant, you will get good decision. Powerhouse of the cell means what? Mitochondria. Okay, not sri Understand? Right? Now let us start the features present in what? Present in mitochondria. So as already I have mentioned you, it is what? Green. Oval or cylindrical grains will be scattered in cytoplasm. That grains are nothing but mitochondria. The grains are nothing but what? Mitochondria. Okay. They are very small. They are very small. They are spherical like this. They are cylindrical like this. They will be scattered here and there in the cytoplasm. Okay. And what is the length means? It is only just 2 to 8 microns. The length of mitochondria, the length of mitochondria, it will not be this much big. For your convenience, to show you the internal structure, this was designed like that. But this much big mitochondria will not be there in your cell. Most probably, cell also cannot be seen by your naked eye. Okay? So, how much long? 2 to 8 microns long. And how much width? How much width means it is only 0.5. It is only 0.5. And you can see this is how much smaller means nucleus. When you compare nucleus like this, this is 150 times smaller than, smaller than, how what? Nucleus. How many times smaller? 150 times smaller than nucleus. How many times smaller than? 150 times smaller than nucleus. And you need not take that. So each and every cell will have nucleus. Only one nucleus will be there. As like this. 
that, you need not think that mitochondria also will be one or two. No. For each and every cell, there are about 100 to 150. In each and every cell, how many nuclei, how many mitochondria will be there? 100 to 150 mitochondria will be present. So, when you observe it under compound microscope, you can find a different structure. When you observe it under the electron microscope, you can find a different structure. When you observe it under compound microscope, it is only dots, as we have seen here. It is only just dots like this. But when you observe it under compound microscope, you will find the structure like this. You got the difference, ma'am? As it is able to magnify for 10,000 times, it is seen like this under electron microscope. Okay, so in the electron microscope, if you observe, it is a double membrane wall. So this is inner outer compartment and this is inner compartment. This is outer membrane and this is inner membrane. That is why we are saying double membrane wall. Double membrane wall. And the inner membrane is having poles. You can see these are the poles, ma'am. So these poles are called as what? Cristae. I am drawing only the inner membrane, ma'am. So if this is the outer membrane, the inner membrane will be like this. Inner membrane will be thrown into poles like this. These poles are called cristae. Cristae. Okay. And the fluid flowing in between this cristae are called as matrix. The fluid flowing is called as what? Matrix. Okay. And finally, what is the role of mitochondria means? It helps in cellular respiration. You all know that each and every cell should be supplied with oxygen. Each and every cell should respire. For that process called cellular respiration, this mitochondria will be helping. As you all know that respiration gives us energy. In your 10th class you will be knowing what do you mean by cellular respiration. So the respiration undergoes each and every cell to derive energy. So as it is helping to derive energy, as it is helping to derive energy to each and every cell, it is called the powerhouse of the cell. It derives energy. It gives energy. It provides energy. That is why it is called the powerhouse of the cell. It is called the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, ma? I hope all of you have understood the structure of mitochondria and these are all the unique features of mitochondria. Okay, Nana? So I hope all of you have followed this lesson properly and in the next video we will discuss about the plastids and Until then, take care.